Let's talk about the Snapmaker 2.0, specifically the CNC module, and why I have a love and a hate relationship with this thing. And we'll let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace, the place where I actually started my business. You can make a website, you can build your brand. It's a great all-in-one solution, kind of like the Snapmaker. So this is the second video in the Snapmaker review series. In the first video, we did kind of a big overview of the whole machine as well as the laser function. If you haven't seen that, you can check it out right up there. But in this video, we're talking about the CNC, specifically the CNC router, where you're using bits to carve out different things into material. Now we're working with the 2.0 A350T, which is their most updated version. And it has a work area of 320 by 340 by 350 millimeters. Now, just like with the laser and the 3D printer module, you're gonna have to replace two things on the machine to get this set up. One is going to be the actual CNC router module, and the other one is going to be the work bed. This takes a little bit of time. You do have to put in several screws, but really it's not a huge deal. Now we have talked about these linear rails in the past and how they are a good bit thicker than what you would typically typically find on a 3D printer. And that was because we are working with a CNC module that is going to have a lot of forces pushing up against it versus just straight 3D printing, which is not really pushing up against anything. And this module specifically has an ER11 collet. And all that means is you can use bits up to an eighth of an inch thick. This one is the eighth inch one that comes with it. I actually have a quarter inch one in there right now that I'm using with my V-bit. And in terms of the spindle, you're working with speeds from 6,000 all the way up to 12,000 RPMs. And really that RPM range does cover what you're going to need to do. Now typically with the kit, you're going to get both a straight end eighth inch bit, and you also get a ball nose bit that is curved that allows you to do more of the 3D carving style stuff. And it comes with a pretty simple straight groove V-bit as well. Uh, and these are really good to do fine detail as well as lettering, but more of like the V-carve style lettering. And then coming to the work bed side of things, you're working with a pretty traditional MDF wasteboard that has all of these threaded inserts that allow you to drop in these clamps. And then these clamps are just on screws, so you can take the whole thing off. You just drop that down wherever it makes the most sense. These clamps are pretty nice and they work pretty well. Now, if you're using thinner stuff, now, unlike the laser and the 3D printer, you really do have to think through how you're going to clamp this down and keep it secure. A lot of times with the laser, if the movement isn't super fast, you really don't have to do anything to it. And with 3D printing, it's all about a heated bed and that first layer adhesion to keep everything stuck to the machine. But with the CNC, you definitely will have to clamp it down. Now, I did a few basic tests with the CNC, and it forms fairly well for a machine that's really only meant for using eighth inch bits. You really aren't gonna be able to run this super fast, but for light engraving or light milling, it's going to do a pretty good job. Now, the performance as well as the size is pretty comparable to what you'd find with a 3018 machine, which are the really budget lower end CNC's a lot of times you can find on Amazon for like a few hundred bucks. But when you're thinking about this machine, you're really not gonna be doing any high end milling. You could potentially do a little bit of aluminum, but you'd have to run it really, really slow. And that really brings me to the hate part of my love-hate relationship with the CNC module. And that is just in the design of the machine. In the first video, we talked about how this is more of a traditional 3D printer setup, kind of in the i3 design, and that these linear rails are stationary, and then you have your gantry that can move up and down. But instead of the gantry moving forward or back, it's actually your work bed that is going to move. Now the gantry moving is gonna be something similar to what you'd see on bigger CNC's like the X-Carve or the Shapeoka or the Onefinity, but having a stationary gantry in the Y direction is pretty similar to what you'd see in a smaller CNC mill setup. So like something from Bantam Tools or even those 3018, 3020 machines we've done reviews of in the past. But here is the key difference on why this doesn't work quite as well, in that you only have one attachment point from the work bed to either of these rails that are along the Y axis. And because of that, you can actually flex this whole bed forward and back fairly easy. Going left to right is a good bit harder because again, it's got two points of attachment in that direction. Now I probably could tighten this down a little bit more, but just the fact this is only attached in the center, you still are going to have some flex, especially if you're running the spindle into the material at a pretty high torque. It's just gonna get caught up, it's gonna lock up and the whole thing is gonna flex. And actually you can kind of see a pretty good example of that. And I ran this with a little bit more aggressive cut settings and you can see that this binds up. So you've got flex on both the bed, but then you also have flex right here. Now again, I probably could tighten this down a little bit 
more, but you're still gonna have a little bit of play in the system overall. Now, if you're running this at lower speed, you're not going quite as deep and you're not doing metal, but you're doing softer materials, it really isn't going to be an issue. It's just gonna take a good amount of time to go all the way through the process. Now, one thing I'd love to see in the future is a bed design that is more common to something you'd see in like the 3020 machine, because those still do have rails right here in the Y direction, but they also have attachment points on the front and the back of the bed. So you have four total connection points instead of just two. So you really won't get that racking in the bed. And because of that, if you're just gonna buy this machine just for the CNC function, I wouldn't recommend it. I definitely would recommend going with a 3018 or 3020 machine. It's gonna be cheaper and the performance is going to be a little bit better. But then again, this thing can do a lot more than just CNC carving. It's got the laser module and the 3D printer module, and it also gives you the ability to do something I really haven't been able to do on any machine I've owned in the past. And that brings me to the love section of my relationship with this machine. And that's because of this module right here. I wanna give a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And they actually helped me start my very first business that had nothing to do with DIY making. It was actually making kids books where I'd write and illustrate them. I was able to set up my website super easy. I could buy my domain directly through them. I could even sell the digital versions of those books through the website itself. So it's a great all-in-one solution if you're wanting to build your business and brand online. Now you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, if you go to squarespace.com forward slash make or break shop, you can save 10% on a website or domain. So this is the rotary attachment that you can get with this machine that turns the CNC from a three axis to a four axis CNC. And it is honestly a lot of fun to play with because you're able to do stuff like this. So these are actually both test files that they give you. And this line, I just ran like a roughing pass. So that's why it doesn't look super great, but you can definitely get the idea of how it's gonna be able to carve 360 all the way around this guy. Uh, and this one was a little bit more finished. Now, I didn't use a super thin bit, that's why you don't have like the gap underneath the neck. But being able to do stuff like this is pretty cool. Now you can also use the rotary with the laser module, and I'll talk more about that in the future. But the ability to do a rotary really opens up a bunch of different options that you just couldn't before. And honestly, this thing is going to get a lot of really nerdy use because I'm gonna make a lot of wizard wands as well as lightsabers with this thing. Now you might've seen laser rotaries in the past, which are basically two different rollers that you just set your piece on. Those rollers move and then your whole piece rolls over. Now that definitely would not work with this because once you put any type of carving force against it, nothing is holding it to those rollers other than gravity. So it's just not going to carve into versus this guy, which is much more like a lathe in that you actually have jaws. These three jaws that clamp down onto your material. And it also has a tailstock on this end. They're able to push in and support it from the other side. Now the workflow for these files is a good bit different than the typical CNC setup because in the Lubin software, it's basically going to import a 3D model as a depth map. So it's going to have different values from dark all the way to light. And it's going to stretch stretch them out. You'll place that on your work bed, then send it to the machine. It definitely will take a little bit to play around with to figure out how to get it to work. But again, these sample projects that they have directly inside of the software already loaded up are a great place to start. Now the rotary will still have the same issues as just the CNC in general, in that you're not gonna be able to run it at high speeds or with a lot of torque because even with the rotary sitting on top of it, the whole work bed can still flex. Now the rotary is nice because it actually attaches in several different screw holes. And so this thing is rock steady against the actual work bed. And speaking of that software, you definitely can use Lubin to do more of the traditional CNC work where you're just doing text or different outlines that you're going to carve out. But you can also just import G-code directly to the machine just like you can with the laser or even the 3D printer. And I actually like to use Easel from Inventables to do all of my CNC stuff. Full disclosure, I actually work for Inventables, but I was using Easel way before then just because it's really easy to use. There's a free tier to the program. It's got a lot of great tools and pretty easy to use. You can import that G-code and then run it to the machine. Now you'll still have to zero the machine, whether you do it directly here on this touchpad or on the computer, but then you can just run custom G code wherever you create it. A lot of people also use VCarve as well as Fusion 360. Now in the future, 
I'm gonna be using Fusion to do a lot of the stuff for the rotary, just because it gives you a lot more controls for carving, versus Lubin, which is very, very, very basic. But Fusion's really gonna be able to let you dial it in and tune it to work with your machine. And one big reason for using Fusion currently is that Lubin really doesn't give you an easy option for a two-stage carving with the rotary. So you'll definitely wanna do a roughing pass and then do the fine detail with a thinner bit. If you just did it with the fine bit, it's going to take forever. Actually, I put in their V bit and I did the horse head and it was giving me a time of like 96 hours, which is just insane. But if you throw in a roughing bit, that takes about an hour and then it can finish it up in a couple of hours. So the times go way, way down. Now you can create the tool pass, but when you switch out the bits, the internal software, it's still a little bit buggy in terms of how it zeroes where it is on the actual rotation of the machine. Hopefully that's something they're going to improve in the future. Now there definitely are some workarounds and you can make it work, but just for now, it's a little bit clunky. Now, when you add on the rotary to the machine itself, you are closing in on nearly $2,000. And that probably is the biggest drawback just overall to this machine. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments in terms of the price versus the functionality of what the Snapmaker provides you. I know that is a little bit of a hot topic issue. And in the next upcoming video, we'll be talking about the 3D printer, which is really what the Snapmaker was originally made for. Now I'm comparing this a good bit to the 3020 CNC. We're gonna jump into my review of that right there. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.